grow in our relationship with you, and that we might love you, and that we might be thankful to you, and that we might learn to be obedient to you. And Father, we have come into this place that we might learn also to love each other. And Father, we ask that you would give us Christ-like hearts, that you would teach us, mold us, transform us, dear Lord. Help us to leave this place encouraged, lifted up, filled with your Holy Spirit, refreshed and renewed, that we might go out beyond these walls and take the message of your Son, Jesus Christ, to the world. Be with us now, and I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I love the story of Joshua. We have been studying a bit about his faith and his life in our book study on Monday nights. So a little bit of this will be reviewed for those attending the book study. First of all, Joshua becomes Moses' assistant and is at the right hand of Moses. When Moses leads the people and the Hebrews out of Egypt, Joshua becomes his assistant to mentor under Moses. They get to the Red Sea, you know the story, and the Egyptian army begins to close in behind them. And Moses prays and the Red Sea parts and the Egyptian, I mean the Hebrews, go across on dry land. And then as the Egyptian army enters the sea, the waters close and they are destroyed. God destroys the enemy. I would think this would be a very memorable event in Joshua's life. Can we agree on that? That that would probably be a pretty memorable experience as he goes through that. Well, then we get to the point where Moses is out at Mount Sinai and he's ready to go up the mountain. And guess what? It's very something we don't talk about that much, but Joshua actually got to go along with Moses up on the mountain. Now, he only got to go part way. Right? We only got to go part way, but it must have been amazing just to be up on that mountain with Moses. So Moses receives the Ten Commandments from God. And it was such an amazing experience for Moses, and it was such a powerful experience with God, that as he comes down the mountain, his face is just shining. So I would say, again, that this experience certainly would have had a huge impact on Joshua's faith, as he again is learning under Moses, as he is mentoring under Moses, he is leading the people and he is growing in his faith. Now when they reach the promised land, Joshua and Caleb are two of the twelve spies that are sent into the land to check it out. And they went into the land and we know they saw things that were, they saw nations of they saw what looked like giants, they saw fortified cities, whatever. When they came back to report to Moses, only Joshua and Caleb gave faithful reports. They said, we can do this. No problem. God wants us to go into the promised land. We need to go. We need to enter in. We'll be okay. We'll be fine. We can do this. The promised land is a land flowing with milk and honey, and it's the place for us to be. The other ten spies gave bad reports, and they said, no, 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 we can't do this. We can't enter the promised land. This isn't going to work. We're going to be killed. There's too many giants over there. The armies are strong. We can't do it. We can't do it. So the people all jumped on the bandwagon against Joshua and Caleb, and as a result, they ended up wandering around in the wilderness for until all of that entire generation of people died off. The only people in that group who really got to enter the promised land was Joshua and Caleb <coughs> and the children of the generations of the adults. What, what a shame. It, it was 40 years of wandering around the wilderness because they just couldn't have the faith to step out listen to the words of Joshua and Caleb and Moses and try to lead them. Moses at least got to look into the promised land. He got to see it. 
and he did not even get to enter the uh, promised land. So Joshua spent 40 years living in the wilderness waiting for God to make a move, waiting for God to make his move. And finally, Joshua and Caleb and the next generation of Hebrews were allowed to enter the promised land. And as they got to the river again, it was time to cross over, and God parted the waters again. That story's not as, quite as well known as the one with Moses and the Red Sea. But God parted the waters, and they marched into the promised land. And as they began to... Uh, take over and do the things they needed to do in the promised land. They got in the middle of some battles and so on. And we read in, in Joshua chapter 10 where Joshua prayed to God for the sun to stand still. Not a really well-known story necessarily, but it's kind of the story that the author of our whole study kind of built around this whole study on faith. But we see that Joshua prayed that the sun would stand still. And it did. God answered that prayer. God caused the sun to shine for an extra 24 hours. Now it's interesting because even the scientists have shown and proven that at some point in history, in those years, the sun did actually, there was actually an extra 24 hours added into the calendar. So we see it in scripture, and we see an awesome prayer of faith to God, and we see, of course, an awesome and faithful God who took care of his people. So throughout the scriptures, we have seen God answer prayers with miracles. We know that Elijah prayed for a famine. And then we know that Elijah prayed up on the mountain when he was dealing with uh, Ahab and Jezebel and, and the, and the uh, prophets of Baal. We know that Elijah prayed and the fire came down. We see just lots of stories through the Old Testament on and on of a faithful God who, who answered prayers very powerfully and that would give New Testament, and of course we see the move of Jesus Christ as he ministered to the people. And we see prayers, we see healings, we see deliverance from oppression, demonic oppression. And Jesus prayed for the people and set them free. We see that throughout the scriptures. In our lives today, we have seen God answer prayers as well. I bet every one of us would have some type of story or testimony of a time when God has answered prayers in our lives in a very strong way, or in somebody else's lives. We've seen all kinds of answers to prayers. We have seen people physically healed in a way that left doctors speechless. Now, there's times when you still have to go through the surgeries and the radiation and the chemotherapy or whatever, but we see God's hand moving in the doctors and in our lives and we've seen lots of people healed from prayer. We've seen broken relationships miraculously restored. We've seen people lose their jobs and pray and then quickly land new jobs that pay twice as much and then it's much better for their whole family situation. Sometimes and a lot of times it goes that way. Faith works. Prayers produce. And praise God there's nothing better we have we experience those, those wonderful times. But sometimes, and a lot of times, quite honestly, it does seem like it goes the other way. Sometimes you pray your best, your most honest and heartfelt prayers, and there doesn't seem to be an answer. Or sometimes my answer is no. Sometimes, even though our motives are pure, our desires are good, our needs are urgent, the breakthrough doesn't seem to come. Or it doesn't seem to come when we want it to come. It doesn't seem to come in necessarily the way that we were planning. And sometimes the turnaround moment doesn't seem to occur. Or it doesn't seem to come when we think it will and so we think it's not coming. Remember, before Joshua ever saw the sun stand still, which, oh yeah, that was great and very miraculous, he had to watch in agony as the sun set slowly on an entire generation. Yes, God gave him the privilege of leading the charge into the promised land. What an awesome story. But before that, he was forced 
first to endure 40 years of wilderness wandering because of someone else's hesitancy. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't his lack of faith. He believed. He wanted to obey. But that generation couldn't see through the doubts and the dangers. So Joshua didn't get to inherit the promise for a long, long time. So this morning, as we are going to follow in Joshua's example he's given us, we've got to follow it all the way from the start to the finish. We can't just copy his prayer. We must have his heart. Joshua had a heart. No matter what the surrounding circumstances were, Joshua didn't pray that God would intervene miraculously so that he could have his way, <coughs> so that he could have a new car or spend an extra day beside the pool during spring break, which is what the author uses as an example. He prayed for the sun to stand still because it was in the heat of battle. He was in the heat of battle, folks. And we continue to live in the heat of battle. We don't have the physical armies marching against us. We don't sit here in this church in fear of the army of some other city somewhere or some other country marching down the street and coming upon us. But we know in the spirit, we know in the spiritual world, we continue to fight the battles. We know that we continue to fight. We continue to fight the, the evil forces that are around us. Know that Jesus is victorious. He was engaged in a bloody back combat, Joshua was, fighting to uphold the glory of the God of Israel. He wouldn't have needed the sun to stand still if he didn't have an enemy of God to defeat. If you never face an enemy of God, you will never experience God's victory. I know we'd like life to be perfect, but if it was, we would never understand God's victory. We never get to experience that. We would not even understand if we didn't get into that heat of that battle sometimes. If bad things didn't ever happen in our lives, we would never understand how great it is when God turns that around and makes it into good things that happen in our lives. Seize the opportunity to see God fight for us rather than let your adversary destroy you blow by blow. Don't let the adversary destroy you, or me, or us, or each other, or your family, or your relationships, or your job, or your church, or anything else that we... Don't let the adversary destroy you. But keep praying. Don't give up. Don't compromise or abandon your faith the first time things don't go your way, or even if certain things never go your way. We always experience things in life. I'm sure we all have where it just didn't go our way. It's not what we intended or wanted to have happen. The disappointments are hard to face. God didn't send Jesus to throw in the towel and call off all the fights. God sent Jesus to step into the ring and fight our battles. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He shed his blood. He defeated the enemy. He destroyed the power of evil and Satan. He rose again on Easter Sunday, even to bring victory over death. The battle is done. It is done. It is finished. Jesus said it is finished. But we do live in this time, betwixt and between, where we are between the resurrection and the second coming. So we still live among the works of the evil world who tries to still raise his ugly head, even though he knows he is defeated. I don't know what kind of enemies have to engage and actually fight the fight of faith. Everybody's list is different, maybe. But we do fight enemies as we fight this fight of faith. You may have to demonstrate the patience of Job. I hope not. Because when you read the book of Job, that's a big mouthful there, I just said. You might have to have the compassion of Christ toward a rebellious teenager. We don't know what we're going to face sometimes. You may have to press through the chronic physical pain, wondering why God has healed so many other people, but won't heal me. Why is that? Why do I have so much pain and God just doesn't seem to heal me? I don't have all those answers. I do know no matter what, God is with us. No wonder God only knows what you're going through right now. Trust your Heavenly Father as He fights for you. The author of the book, <coughs> 
miracle. And other times we get to be the miracle. That is so great. Sometimes we get to see God's strength as it's demonstrated around us and we suddenly see a miracle happen right before our eyes. That's awesome. We get to be a part of that. We get to see that. Other times we are simply called to be faithful, to trust, to persevere, to press on, don't give up, keep going, and God is faithful to give us the strength to do that. Joshua went through 40 years in the wilderness, folks. We can kind of read over that in one sentence because it's in the Old Testament. We can get through that quickly, but it wasn't quick. It was 40 years. Sometimes God gives us those instantaneous, absolutely wonderful answer to prayers. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it takes endurance. Sometimes it really tests our faith, helps us to build, and, uh, and he gives us the strength to shine, enabling us to endure devastating setbacks with remarkable strength. I'm so sure glad Joshua didn't quit in the wilderness. I really am. Joshua got to lead those people into the promised land. I'm glad he endured those 40 brutal, brutal years of aimless wandering, marching to the beat of incessant backbiting and second-guessing, bitter, bitterness and grumbling. He chose to believe that the sun can't stay down forever. He chose to believe that a new day is dawning. He chose to keep his faith and to keep praying and to have a, a, and to know and to continue to confess in a faithful and awesome God that we serve, that we all love and serve together. This is a very praying congregation. You've always been a praying congregation. And we are coming together to pray today for our, for our own needs and for each other. What an awesome place to be because you're already so good at praying for each other. We are so good at that. And yet we continue to <coughs> learn and to grow. We continue to, to pray for each other. We continue to bind together and to you know, fight the spiritual battles. What I'd like to do at this time is I would like for you to Rise. I know that's a battle in itself <laughs> for some people, but could you rise and could you join your hands across the aisles with people? Could you, could you join hands together with somebody? Could you join hands, grab the hand of somebody, go to another pew? Join hands. If the folks can't rise, join their hands while they sit. There. So we just want to have a little bit of time of prayer here together. As we pray in unity, there's strength in, in binding together in prayer. There's strength as we come together and we unify our hearts before God. Let's pray. Father, we come before you and we pray this day. Father, we pray for so many who are in need. We first of all lift up those who need spiritual healing this day. Father, we pray that if there be anyone in this place who does not know for sure that they have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they would right now pray the prayer to you, dear Lord, that asks and receives your forgiveness, your grace, your saving mercy, your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and shed his blood for our sins. Father, we pray first and foremost that every person in this place would be filled with your spirit and that we would have a total assurance of salvation. Father, then we lift up those of our loved ones, our families, our homes, our communities. We pray for those who may not have your salvation in their hearts, dear Lord. We name before you, in our, in our minds only, we name before you, dear Lord, those people. We may whisper them under our breath, but Lord, we name before you those people that we desire to pray for. Not that we are sure who is or is not in the kingdom of God, but we have some doubts and fears for some folks that we know seem like they don't know you, dear Lord. And we bring these people unto you. We name them in our hearts now. Father, we very, very earnestly pray for them. We lift all our hearts together, our spirits in one united and we pray for these folks that they would come to know you that the holy spirit would plant seeds of faith in their lives and that the holy spirit would draw them onto you and draw them into the kingdom 
Father, if we may be a voice to these people in any way, we ask that you would help us to do that. Bring people into their lives that will share the gospel with them, that will show them Christ, that will show them lives that are Christ-like. Father, we pray for those people now that we would have spiritual healing in their lives, that they would have spiritual healing. We pray for our church. We pray, dear Lord, that we might be in your perfect will. We pray for the person on our right. We pray for the person on our left. We pray for the person across the aisle. We pray for the oldest person in this church. We pray for the youngest person in this church and absolutely everyone in between. Father, give us love for you and give us love for each other. We worship you and we praise you, dear Lord. We thank you. We pray for each other. We pray that you would bless every person here. We pray for those who could not be with us today, that you would bless them and take care of them in all things. And Father, we, we love you and we ask that your hand would be upon us. Cover this church with the blood of Jesus. Protect us. Dear Lord, we ask that you would send your angels to fight that spiritual battle that rages in the heavens over this church and over our lives and our homes. We thank you for that. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, as we, uh, you may go back to your seats. As we sing a couple of songs here, we're going to gather up the offering. So we ask the ushers to come forward. While we gather up the 